Hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to our training event on the Optelec 10. I'm, I'm so sorry, the Compact 10 from Optelec. And my name is Rachel. And a quick housekeeping item before I introduce you to our special guests. This session does include a live demo on the Compact 10. And for the best viewing experience, you'll need to click in the right hand corner and it'll give you three different viewing options full screen, gallery, or speaker. And speaker view will give you the best viewing experience for the live demo. So let's get started with the experts on the Compact 10 HD, Richard Tapping and Mike Wood. I'll let them introduce themselves and get started. Thank you for joining us again. Hey, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Mike Wood, and I am the Strategic Accounts Manager for Education here at Vespiro. And you can reach me at mwood, that's M-W-O-O-D, at Vespero, V-I-S-P-E-R-O dot com. And with me today, of course, as Rachel said, we've got the big guy in the house, Richard Tapping. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, Richard Tapping here. I'm Vice President for North America's Sales and Marketing for Vespero. Uh, I can be reached at rtapping at Vespero dot com. And my role today will be uh, as a wingman to Mike, supporting him during the webinar. Gonna be the one saving my life throughout it. Thanks, Richard. Uh, so, little housekeeping as well. We're gonna leave the Q and A to the end. Um, so, Q and A will be at the end via chat or by raising your hand to speak. You can press Alt H to open the chat window. Type in your question, your comment, and press Enter. And then you can press Alt Y if you need to raise your hand, and we can unmute you and you can ask the question live. So today we're going to cover a couple key topics about the Compact 10 HD by Optilec. So why the Compact 10 HD, for example. So we'll do a product overview. We'll cover some features and benefits. We'll go over the reading mode, the full page mode, the OCR mode, which stands for optical, optical character recognition. And then last but not least, we're going to get down to the nitty gritty with the product. We will do a live demo. So sit tight. We'll go through some slides first, and then you'll see it live in action. So the Compact 10 HD is a simple yet effective solution for low vision users. Uh, this product came out right around last year around CSUN. And you know, for me, it came out at a bad time because of the fact that we stopped traveling a lot after CSUN due to COVID and all that stuff. But um, at CSUN, it got rave reviews. Some of the key features with this product are the fact that it's a 10 inch touch screen. So it's very similar to a lot of the uh, newer technology that people are used to using. It only weighs a little over two pounds. It's 2.02 pounds or 0.92 kilograms. So it's very lightweight, which again, lends to that portability. It comes with three multi-purpose cameras, a reading, a writing, and a distance camera. So this kind of covers you at all needs, all different levels. You can view and magnify different texts, objects, photos. Um, with the setup, the way that it's designed, it is a tablet, but you also get the power of a desktop unit. And the magnification level is 0.5x to 22x. And again, with that 10 inch screen, the 22x magnification gives you great level of magnification. And where it is a touch screen, uh, many of you are probably familiar with a lot of the you know, uh, tablet devices out in the market where you can pinch to zoom, you can do that with this unit as well. You can capture and save snapshots and it does have a rechargeable battery that gives you eight hours of continuous use. So Richard, did you want to chat a little bit about uh, some of these different benefits to the, you know, to the functionality or just, just I guess, the different uh, design of the Compact 10 HD? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Uh, I mean, what, one of the things I'll start by saying is when, when you know, the engineering department first thought first started to explore this type of device and, and, and make no mistake this you know for me is a very unique device in the way that we've gone about to try and accommodate the different requirements that someone might need a, a magnifier magnifier like this for you know around the house um, you know quickly spot reading the mail a thermometer you know but also maybe a newspaper article um, looking across the room maybe reading uh, an extended newspaper article or recipes and things of that nature and actually fit in all those requirements in the 10 inch, 10 inch package um, is actually quite difficult, mainly because of the form factor that 
that these smaller devices tend to come in mean that they uh, the camera height, particularly in reading mode, can be very restrictive, uh, meaning that it's limiting the amount of information the user, the client, might be able to get on the screen. And you know, first and foremost, this has to be a very effective video magnifier for you know reading the mail, reading newspaper, and and the way that the form factor is offered here is that if if you if you have a need for capturing you know much larger amounts of information, the Compact 10 has uh, what we call the extendable camera, a, an arm that unfolds off the top of the unit. And, and what that does, it allows for the field of view to be significantly increased. I mean, dramatically increased. You know, you're going from a camera that's probably four or five inches off the off the, uh, off the reading material when you have it in the reading mode. But then when you have that extended arm up, now you're talking about 10, 11 inches of, of uh, available work area under what is a very portable package. And I bring this up because I think it's really relevant because normally you wouldn't find that in any other device other than what we would call a desktop video magnifier. You know, in a desktop video magnifier, you know, tends to sit in the corner of a room that you take your reading material to, you know, you, you'd read your mail and then you'd go back to wherever you were in the house. Uh, and, and that's just not, you know, how we live our day, how we live um, in, in modern day society. So, you know, it's far more efficient for you to bring your video magnifier to the places where you need access to print. You know, so you could go from a living room, a dining room um, to the kitchen and, you know, reading a book to reading a recipe or reading your mail to reading a recipe. You know, you could hold that thing up um, and, and, and make sure your thermometer uh, uh, settings are correct on your, on, your, uh, on your house system. So, you know, the thought process that went in, you know, into the into the into the development of this product, you know, always impressed me because, you know, it's it's not easy having three cameras and then on top of that having an intuitive way for the user to be able to get, you know, to use each of those modes. Because what we don't want to do is have the user having to switch to a mode or you know from one mode to a different mode, you know, based on the task that they're trying to do. So this device is, you know, fairly smart in that it can detect what mode you're in. So when the when the stand is down uh, and you may be looking at photographs, you know, uh, reading the mail, newspaper, flat material, essentially, it's going to know you're in that reading mode and it's going to select the appropriate camera and viewing uh, for that, uh, you know, for that setup. And similarly, as soon as you have that arm extended, it's going to know that you have the arm extended and it's going to switch the view. Um, and you may want to, you know, read a book or write a check a thank you card it'll be much easier to view labels on packaging you know round cans you know essentially a really independent living tool um that, that allows you to be independent in no matter what room uh, of your house wherever you are and, and of course the, the 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 arm does double up as a as a very important um a feature to to be able to provide full page ocr optical character recognition which is you know you mentioned earlier uh, how that can scan and read full pages of text. So I, I've I've always been very impressed with this this device coming out the gate and the thought process that went into meeting the you know the the various you know needs. There aren't many tools out there that is a silver bullet for all, but this makes a pretty good effort at it. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And by the way, I forgot again. I'm so bad. Um, I forgot to give the opening code for the ACVREP credits. So I apologize. And the opening code is compact C O M. P-A-C-T. Um, and don't let me forget at the end to give the closing call. <laughs> I need somebody over here we'll with see. a ruler smacking my hand or something. I'm sure the chat environment will, will remind you. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Um, but you know, you made great points there, Richard. And I think uh, it's funny because earlier I was talking with Rachel, who's on this webinar, and she brought up a great point with the fact that you've got that built-in camera to snap images of text. And she said, you know, what if you got your mail, you wanted to snap all of the uh, you know, information, hopefully not a lot of bills, right? Some good stuff in the mail coming. <laughs> Snap the images of that, and then you can go and sit on your recliner and go back through the images and read it while you're sitting down comfortably. Or what if you want to take some, uh, you know, you're at the library and you're doing research on a topic, you can snap some images at the library stored on this device, and then you can go back to your dorm room and right. review the information that you have on the unit while you're writing your paper. You know, so it's it's really a powerful tool. Um, 
And the flexibility is a no. I mean, there's a, the flexibility of this device. You know, it's as I said earlier. There's, it's you know, we often think about what's the silver bullet that can that can do everything for everybody, and and you know that typically doesn't exist. But having a device that's that's both portable and provides the type of power that you would you know normally see in a desktop environment, it, you know, is one a massive hurdle um, for me that that we've managed to solve with with this with this device. You know, and I think with portable handheld magnifiers, writing underneath them is always a struggle. And, you know, with that fold out arm, it allows you to do that. So like you said, if you're writing out a check, filling out a form, uh, things like that really makes a big difference. That's right. Yeah, so next slide there, Carl. Let's see what we got coming up here next. We've got the reading mode. So uh, as you can see in that image, for those of you that have vision, if you don't, uh, it's a gentleman sitting in a chair and what he does is he has the Compact 10 um, sitting up at a nice angle, sitting on top of a magazine or a book. And we'll show you live here in a little bit how that reading angle is really important and nice. It's ergonomic for you. Um, so you don't have to lean over and you know kind of arch your back when you're reading something. So this is great to be used for reading mail, newspapers, magazines, or looking at photos. You know, we just got through the holidays. I'm sure a lot of you got some different uh, cards that you wanted to read or pictures of your grandkids or your kids. Um, and you can do so in this style mode, in the reading mode. And when Richard had mentioned earlier with that fold out, swing out arm, uh, that's where you then get into full page mode. So this is great if you're filling out forms, writing checks, uh, if you're reading something like a medicine bottle, you're doing games. You know, we oftentimes forget, we think of these as just work machines, you know, something that you need to do for work. But what about daily living or fun? You might want to do some crossword puzzles, word searches. Um, you know, what if you're reading the back of a box of, you know, food that you bought, you want to read the nutritional value, or you want to read the instructions on how to cook something. You know, these are daily living aids that you can use this to do. And I can tell you, speaking from my grandfather, my experience with my grandfather and his vision loss, I can tell you that, you know, one of the things that we noticed as he, as he began, began to withdraw, you know, with, as a result of loss, what was that he would stop doing this fun type of stuff, right? He'd stop doing the crosswords in the newspaper. Um, it, it'd be more reliant on, on my grandmother, you know, for certain things. Um, and so, you know, regaining one's independence is... Clearly, a, a huge game changer. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many calls I get. Uh, you know, I've done some deliveries for the local VA here, and you know, if they have an issue, oftentimes you know it could be even user error or something with the unit. But when I go out and make sure it's all working again, I'm just the calls of thank you that I get saying, you know, you've you've let me get back to you know reading the newspaper, simple things like that that we take for granted oftentimes. So. Um, you know, I, I also want to mention one of our colleagues was telling us when this unit came out, you know, we usually get the demo unit to try out um, so that we can then talk about it, right? And he had said he took it to a steakhouse with his wife. And after they'd eaten, you know, you're in kind of a dark, dim lit restaurant. And he opened this up and was reading the receipt to look at the receipt and to sign the receipt just to test it out. You know, we, we like to give these a good trial and, you know, put it through the ringer to see, you know, how our users are going to use it. And he said he had a lot of people, you know, looking over at the table saying, what is that thing? And he was impressed at how great the quality was in this dimly lit restaurant because this has the built-in lighting. And even on that swing out arm, it's got a built-in light there as well. So even in low light conditions, you can really do a lot. Next slide there, Carl, thanks. Uh, so the OCR mode, uh, you kind of touched on, Richard. Uh, you can scan in an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And this will read it out loud back to you. It will highlight the word as it reads it if you want it to. Uh, you've got different color selections. So you can change the contrast and coloration of that reading. You can then zoom into it if you want to view it as a live image. Uh, you know, you can magnify that. You've got some a, a tactile marker on the side, which I'll show you, that helps you align the document. And as we mentioned earlier, for viewing and signing. Um, and I also want to mention what we're talking about the OCR mode is this does come with multiple languages. So it's not going to translate. Translation is always difficult. Um, but if you have something in Spanish, German, French, Italian, you know, there's a, a wide, long list of different languages that this can read to you in. 
And so if you scan something in in Spanish and then you change the voice to a Spanish voice, this will read it to you with the correct inflection and everything. And I know that we've tried this with uh, customers and they're always impressed by the voice when it's reading in those different languages. Yeah, and, I, and I'd say on the OCR mode, I mean, what, one of the features I really like in, the, in this device um, is the ability to change the captured text. So, you know, sometimes when you do OCR mode, it will digitize the text. So it, it will physically take a picture of the text and, and, and put it in a digital, uh, digital mode, which, you know, can be very good, particularly if you're using high levels of magnification because we can eliminate a lot of that distortion. But if you're trying to navigate, for example, a newspaper page where there may be an image or a chart or something that, you know, might need to be referenced, having that ability to do a live view image, particularly with this device, because you have that extended camera, you know, is, is a really nice addition. And the other mode that it has in here, which, which again, is, is I like for improving access to the print, particularly with those that use OCR, is we can actually scroll. So sometimes when you, when you capture a, you know, a large amount of information on one single page, it can be, some people do find it tricky to navigate that captured text. And one of the features that the Compact 10 has with the speech with the OCR mode is it can actually scroll one single line of text across the screen in any magnification size digitized, um, which makes it far easier for, for, some, for some users to get access and follow that, uh, follow that reading. Um, you know, and can select any reading speed they wish. Um, so they can really make it very comfortable um, for, for, for getting access to that print. And, and, and I will say one more thing that, you know, going back to these different modes that we have, you know, again, you don't necessarily have to select any of these modes. They're, they're in the device and they work intuitively. And, you know, I will say, this is the other part of this device that's really impressed me is because we, we have to take really particular care when we're producing these types of devices that they don't become an additional barrier for the people that we're trying to help. Um, and, and, you know, you'd be surprised how, how easy, you know, for example, you know, touchscreen, this is a touchscreen device. There aren't any controls other than a power button that's on this device. So we have to take enormous care when we're producing the, the user experience and, and user interface with these devices to ensure that we're not creating an additional barrier that's going to make it somewhat difficult for someone to go from, for example, a distance mode to a reading mode. So again, this device will detect the, the mode that you're trying to use or will make a best effort um, based on the fact that if you extend the, extend the or, or, or retract the stand, whether you extend or retract the, the, the extended arm, and it will figure out what you're trying to do and, and it will automatically select the right camera. Um, and so, you know, thus removing any UI barriers or technology barriers for that matter that someone might get, particularly if we're, if we're trying to serve you know, someone who's senior that, you know, may not have ever experienced a smartphone, you know, may not get on with, with, with touchscreen. And that's why we have um, the on-screen controls that I know you're going to demo um, a, little, a little later. And the other thing I like, um, you know, I, I was talking earlier about how this really serves a purpose as a, I wouldn't call it a desktop replacement, but if, but, but again, in, 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 in the aim of trying to re remove barriers rather than add, and, and provide you know, enormous efficiency and flexibility for the user trying to accomplish the specific needs that might, you know, one to, you know, it might happen one after the other. So having something that can adapt very quickly to that need is, is what we've come up here. And if you want to use it, you know, while this device only has, let's say, you know, 22X, I think of, of maximum magnification, you might look at a desktop magnifier and say, well, that has 60 or 70X. But a unique feature of this device is you can actually mirror cast the image to a television. So you could almost imagine this as a, as a if you're using it at home and you're an avid reader and you, you know, you're generally doing a lot of reading and you want the performance of a desktop, you could easily use this as, as your camera, your capturing device of the text and throw wirelessly the image to a, to a monitor or a TV that could be directly in front of you. And that, you know, obviously you're limitless into, almost limitless, but um, in, into how big of a, screen you want to use. For example, a 55 inch TV will probably give you something like 230X magnification, which you know, will probably be you know, suffice for, 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 for many people. Um, but it's a really nice, we've done away with cables. You know, this is another barrier that when you're trying to extend 
the use cases of these devices and you want the ability, you'd like the ability for somebody to be able to plug this into a, a, a larger screen if they thus, if they so wish. Well, if you're visually impaired, um, you have low vision and you then having to figure out, you know, which way the cable goes in the device or the back of the monitor or even get to the back of a TV, you know, uh, then having this mirror cast, this wireless capability that's easily accessible from the menu and, and it might be something you can at least bring up in the in the demonstration uh, later, Mike, to demonstrate that. Yeah, that's a great point to show that. Um, yep. And also the Bluetooth capability, we were forgetting to mention that, the fact that, mm. you know, if you're in a classroom setting and, or again, you're in a library or somewhere where you just don't want people to know what you're listening to, you can Bluetooth this to a Bluetooth, a Bluetooth uh, headset, or it does have the audio jack. So if you're still using, you know, an auxiliary record, you can do so, but it is the higher tech with that Bluetooth built in. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah, and then, uh, you know, to touch on even that reading functionality you mentioned earlier with just that one line of text, you know, it's nice that you can change it from that one line or you can do it to just text or you can do the live view and view it as the live image with highlighting on that image. Uh, it's nice to have that flexibility and okay. if you add in there, you know, on top of even maybe low vision, some reading and writing issues, um, you know, if they're struggling with reading, cutting it down to that one line of text just makes it less um, less intimidating and kind of cuts down on the anxiety of having to read maybe a full page of text where now they're taking it in smaller bits as just a line. So it's nice. Yeah. So what's up next here, Carl, on these slides? Let's see, the nitty gritty. So as we've mentioned, you've got the power of a desktop video magnifier uh, in this small compact device at about half the price of what a desktop unit would cost. Um, this does come in two models. And I think that also comes down to the pricing stuff. As far as you can get this with speech, which is with the OCR and allows you to scan and have it read, or you can do it without, which without that, it's going to just be a magnification device uh, with all the good stuff that we'll show you in a little bit, minus that scanning and reading. Comes with a two year warranty. And if you are interested in finding out pricing or you want to get your hands on one of these to try it out, uh, give us a call at Optilec or call your local Optilec dealer and they can take care of you. You know, I think I'll add to that. And, and you know, some people might, might ask, you know, why, why have two models? I mean, one of the things that we, as anyone in this industry will know, you know, this type of technology is not, is not cheap. It's not cheap to manufacture and it's certainly not cheap to purchase. And so we were sensitive to that because again, we're trying to remove barriers here. Um, and, and, you know, porting across as much of that desktop type of performance, the power that you find on a desktop into a portable package like this, you know, and of course, a big part of that effort is to subsequently reduce the cost and, and make it more accessible for people financially, um, you know, as, as well. So having the, so what we decided was you know, not everybody's gonna want speech. Um, it, you know, some people would just want a magnification device and therefore, you know, being sensitive to the cost of this to, to users, should, should those users that, that perhaps don't use or don't need optical character recognition, why would we, you know, why would we make them pay for it? So that's why we have two. It's purely because of cost basis that, you know, if, if you don't need the speech component, then we're not going to force you to pay for it. So we're just trying to reduce that financial cost of barrier. Great point. And now for the live demo. <laughs> so let me, um, one thing I would recommend is on your Zoom up on the top right where you can change your view, uh, you want to go to speaker view. And uh, Carl, I'm going to ask that you stop sharing your slides. And then if somebody can give me access to uh, share my video, whoever's the host here. And I will share my video. And then if you change your view to speaker view, that'll allow you to then. We see you, Mike. There I am in the flesh. <laughs> technology, technology working. Look at that. All right. So I want to start out here by just showing you the unit to start out. So here's the unit. Again, this is super compact. I mean, it's lightweight, under two pounds. Um, so on the, I'm going to turn myself around the left hand side. You'll notice, as Richard said, it's very simple. You've got three, well, you've got one button and that's gonna be your power button. You've got the audio jack and then you've got a USB-C for your charger. I like to point this out too, because 
of the fact that, you know, when you've got these different devices for charging, right, you've got a low vision user. Uh, I know some products are really hard to figure out, you know, how to find the charging port. Where this is a USB-C, it doesn't matter what way you put this in. It can go upside down, either or, and just clicks right in super easy. Easy peasy. So that's a nice feature that they did there. Um, this is the top. So you'll notice here that these, this camera and this light, this is for that swing out arm that we were talking about. So this is your top view. And just to show you here how that flips out, there it is when that's opened. And you'll see this a little bit later as well, how that works. So very easy to just pull that out and it automatically then will start using this camera when you do so. The other side, there's nothing over here. Again, very simple, clean, ergonomic design. On the front here, you've got a speaker built in. So there's a speaker built right here for that audio output. And on the back, you've got the other camera. So this camera is a dual purpose camera. So this is gonna be used when you're in the reading stand, which you'll see here shortly, or when you're doing distance. So one thing with this is I can hold it like this. And if I were going to, uh, I'll actually show the distance just how you'd see it. If I were going to a restaurant, I was looking at a menu or something like that, I can actually hold it just like this. And that camera is going to show me what's up on the menu. And I can zoom in by pinching and zooming. Um, or I can tap the screen and then tap the uh, camera button to take a snapshot of that if I wanted. Yeah, great use case of that there as well. For example, you walk into a coffee shop, you know, the menu could be, you know, 12 feet or so away from you behind the counters. It, it can be it can be a little difficult to get access to that and handheld smaller handheld video magnifiers you know could struggle um to to reach that distance and provide enough text have a, have a wide enough uh, field of view to capture and present that text in a readable format what's nice about this device because it's a 10 inch device you've got lots of real estate it's got a very good distance camera on it perfect for that kind of intermediate 12 15 feet you could capture the, you can, you could freeze the image. There's a couple of ways you could get access to that information uh, on that menu. But the one I like is you could freeze uh, that image and then magnify that image. You know, bring, so once you've frozen it, you can bring the compact 10 back to yourself in a more comfortable position, like you would hold any tablet. And then you can pan around, you can magnify it and pan around a magnified image to, you know, to, 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 to navigate that menu. It's a very simple way. What, and, the reason I want to bring that up is it's not, you don't have to hold the device. So, you know, I've, I've attempted this and, and you, if you go into a restaurant and try and hold the device and then, and you're in five or six or 10 X, what you'll find is the image gets very shaky. It's very difficult to hold the text and make it readable when you're in that level of magnification. So don't try that. You simply hold it, you take a picture without any magnification. And once you've done that, now you can magnify that magnified image and pan around it to get access to the to the you know the menu as would be in this case. Great point. Um, so here's from the back. I, I do want to show that reading stand. So it's got this built in, and so you'll notice here. I just snap that down. The lights turn on. It automatically will turn on for you there. Here's a side view. So it sits at a very nice angle, and I always tell people this is important because a lot of magnifiers uh, on the market will have to sit flat like this on the text. And so if you're then, you know, sitting, you're kind of hunched over looking down, not very comfortable when you're reading material. So uh, it sits like this. And I'm just going to change my screen setting here so we get less glare. And there it is sitting on top of a newspaper. And I'm going to just turn that around so you then get the front face view there. And you'll notice right now I have it in live color mode. So you'll see images in color. Your text is just as it is in the newspaper. And again, I want to reiterate, this is a touch screen. So as we mentioned earlier, you've just got that one button to turn it on on that side. Tap the screen once, and you'll notice you've got your buttons that pop up on the screen here. So going from this side to the other, you've got your plus, which will increase your magnification. You've got your contrast button. So this will toggle you between your different contrasts. There's four color contrast. Uh, presets, and you can customize those with a bunch of different options. Middle button is your scanning and reading, so you can snap an image, uh, uh, excuse me, snap this text, and then it will run the OCR on it and read it out loud for you. Next is your freeze frame. And just to show you that, if I wanted to freeze frame, 
this is kind of a cool feature. I think you touched on this earlier, Richard, too. Uh, so we freeze, you know, we froze that image, but it then allows us to zoom into that by pinching and zooming. And then we could actually just kind of scroll through and read that as we want. You know? well, I love this feature. So, you know, what, what, you, what, what you tend to find, again, with a lot of, if people are trying to access a lot of text, it can be difficult to navigate. Now, we have the option in OCR that can produce, you know, a different digitized image in a scrolling manner if you're using OCR. But if you're not, if you're just using magnification, you know, anybody that's familiar with these types of devices will, will, will know that, you know, often you're moving the material, perhaps on an XY table or just sliding it across a table under the camera to try and read and navigate text. And, and this, you know, this particular feature I, I really like because it eliminates, you know, some, some clients may find that slightly difficult. And again, you know, for the reason of removing barriers, having the feature to snapshot something, as the example I gave, if you're in a coffee shop, you could magnify it and pan around. But this is really nice. And it's really, uh, really well demonstrated once you've got the extended camera up because you can capture a much larger amount of text. And then instead of moving the text underneath the camera, you can simply magnify it and, and, and Mike, just move your finger, just pan across the document. And now you can navigate across the document in a really comfortable way and, and it flows much easier. So for some people, they're gonna find navigating large amounts of text using this type of feature, particularly with that extended camera, because again, you can capture a full page. Um, I think it's, it's a really nice feature. Yeah, and we'll show that. I'll show that for you uh, with that arm extended on a, a full page. So it's really nice. You'll get a better view of that. And you can save these images. Uh, I know one of our colleagues was saying that they had a student in college that had used this to do a presentation. So she snapped the images of the text that she wanted to read to the class uh, up at the podium for her presentation. And she was able to just recall them. So you just come up here to your menu and you can click on open and open up a file that you have saved. And then she was able to read it from here. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and back to those menu buttons on the last side here, you've got your zoom out, but you decrease magnification. Uh, one thing that I do wanna mention is this right here is the advanced mode. So we do have up on the top left-hand side, your menu button. So this is where you come in to change your voice, do some different lines. I won't go into all these functions right now, but um, change your screen brightness, or then open a file if we were opening something. There's none on this machine. Uh, and then down here, you can get into more in-depth settings. And over here on the top uh, right-hand side is your time and date. But you know, if you wanted to simplify this, so again, we're working, we wanted to make this work for all different people. So if you're working with somebody that may be a little older and less tech savvy, and you don't want to have them or give them the option of getting into the menu where they might get confused or change settings, you actually can press and hold on the contrast button down here. Oh, I didn't press and hold right there. And when you press and hold on that, it pops up to mode where you can then choose easy or advanced. So I'm gonna go into the easy mode now and let me change my contrast back here just so you get the view. And now when I tap that screen, I only get four buttons down the bottom. So I get my magnification increase and decrease. I get my scanning, my OCR button, and then I get my contrast button. And I, I'll just point out that if, if this particular unit is a compact 10 with speech. So in, uh, in, in easy mode, you'd still have the OCR component as, a, as an option, of course. So you still have the OCR button, but if you, if you didn't have uh, the compact 10 with speech and you had the compact 10 without speech, then the easy mode would, would simply be magnification up and down and contrast. There would not be a, an OCR option. So it would, it would be a, another step to simplify the, the user interface. Great point. Thanks, Richard. Yeah, because I have the one with speech. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for this, I think uh, earlier we were showing even, you know, so here's a newspaper under that. And same if I want to put in here a word search. Don't mind some of the glare there on the screen is from my uh, lighting above me here. So you've got word search, great. We can change all of our contrasts again. And if we come over to a live view, you know, one of the things I know, again, for, you know, seniors, I like to say, if they want to look at pictures, 
you're going to get a treat here, everybody. Uh, you're going to see me with hair. <laughs> <laughs> Only so, there you go, me with hair when I was just a young little <laughs> lad. Which one is you? <laughs> the one right here. Oh, uh, okay. So you're the one with a lot of hair. <laughs> How things change. <laughs> uh, ain't that the truth? <laughs> And this one here that doesn't have much hair on the graphic on the picture, excuse me, has tons of hair now. So, you know, just to show you the image quality is, is really, really great. Um, and looking at pictures and you could snap a picture of this and then save it on this unit if you wanted to look at it later. Um, and yeah, yeah go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, I mean, again, this is you know, the, the color representation is key, you know, so we, this is another area that we, we pay a lot of attention to, you know, for example, you know, it's great for photos, right? You want good color representation for any pictures that you're looking, but, you know, think about, you know, someone seeing here maybe taking four or five different medicines a day, you know, it's important to make sure that the, the pink and the orange medicine are, you know, easy identifiable and and having it and it can be easy with some uh, you know lower cost video magnifiers that you see the color representation isn't always that accurate um and so you know there's, there's a good example there of the the color accuracy and you know both for enjoyment of looking at photos but it you know there's a there's a, there's a health risk there too which is why it's important to make sure that we have that color contrast correct i mean i don't want to over pitch that but um you know it, it is an important aspect of course Absolutely. And 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 by the way, you know, just I, I would like to show people the menu area here. Yeah. So get just pop into the menu system because as a reading tool, you know, you've got you're demonstrating the reading mode here, and there are some great reading uh, features in here. So you know, screen brightness, nice and easy on the front down yep. that sliding scale. So you you know, if if you want to reduce the glare, the brightness, if it, having that control there and having it intuitively located, you know, is very helpful because you know if you haven't got the brightness uh, screen brightness. Uh, set correctly it can make accessing anything kind of difficult the reading line you know top middle i was talking about navigating being you know navigating documentation can be difficult so having something that can help so if you magnify that a little a, a little uh, like yeah so you know i mentioned earlier about this format using the camera you'd be moving that camera above your reading material and again if you're if you're in a high level of magnification or if there's a lot of text and if there's a lot of text it can be difficult to navigate one uh, one line of text to the next. So having a navigation line or a reading line, as we call it, um, option it is again another one another one of those ways to 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 uh, reduce the barriers. And then the the open area is of course for file management. But then the bottom right hand corner, Mike, for the files. I just want to highlight how yeah. easy it is to do the. So we mentioned earlier, here's your color management. So you know comes out the box with what you be accustomed to finding in, in terms of your color modes there's an enormous amount of uh uh of flexibility in here and again you can have you know set four modes and pick your colors or eliminate them as mike is, is demonstrating um slide out of this mike uh, the view area which is what we talked about area earlier where, where imagine this this is so this is a light what we call live view so this is really nice for, again, if you're looking at a newspaper, there's some pictures in there that you want to reference that you don't want those, you know, digitized or, or you rather because you still want to see them, um, then this mode is good for that. This is your single mode. Uh, you basically got three viewing modes here, your single scrolling text of line and then your full digitized uh, text image again. And, and in addition to that, you've got highlight options. So you know, if you'd rather have a underline or a box, and I think there might be some color modes that you can select there too. Um, so, so slide out of this, Mike. Yep. Um, th there is your mirror cast option. Uh, really nice. So that's going to be tricky for you to demonstrate here, but you know, essentially it allows you to search for a compatible monitor or a TV. You can select it, it joins, and then it will throw a copy of you know, the live image to whatever TV that you've, you've selected. Bluetooth is a great feature because this is compatible with Bluetooth 4.0. So if you want the privacy of Bluetooth headsets, I do believe it works with some hearing aids as well, although I couldn't tell you the list of which ones. Uh, the reading lines that we mentioned earlier. Uh, and then some other things that you guys would be a, accustomed to seeing, like, you know, columns to ignore columns or, or, or include columns. You know, you might be looking at a bank statement, things like that, or even a newspaper. You want that to... Uh, 
you want the newspaper to read the columns, you don't want the, the telephone bill or the bank statement to read the columns. Um, I did theme, like theme, yep. I love theme. Yeah, what a great easy feature that is. So the on-screen controls are generally black on white background. And as we know, you know, if someone's using the reverse contrast and yet all the menu system is not in reverse contrast, well, that's kind of pointless. So having the ability to invert the the, the control theme of the device uh, is an option there. You know, lights, of course, are, are, are one of the, when we talk about the fundamentals of, of, of low vision, we're talking about magnification, lighting, and contrast. So it would seem necessary to have light management in here to allow you to select, you know, for example, if you're using the distance camera and you're using it in a coffee house, probably not a great idea to have a light beaming off the back of the device and um, and, 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 and you know, making it fairly uncomfortable for others to see. So having that override and being able to turn off that light management when you're required is, is great. And, I, you know, I think the others are fairly self-explanatory here, but go back up. There's, the, the reason why I came in here to begin with yeah, yeah. Was, that one, was that one right there, buttons. So, because we were talking about the controls, oh. third down to, yeah, yes. right. Because, you know, again, the orientation of where the buttons sit, some people might want the ability to, you know, hold it with one hand. And so being able to select the buttons or move the buttons uh, around, uh, A, provides different level of accessibility on the, the text you're trying to read. So, for example, you know, in what I would call uh, uh, landscape mode, you know, you may be, and you're trying to read columns in a newspaper, you may be reducing the amount of real estate because those on-screen controls, they do disappear, but for a few seconds, they're gonna be there and potentially reducing the amount of real estate that you have. So perhaps you want to move the, those, those buttons and controls out of the way of any text that you could be reading. Um, it also could be for ergonomic reasons. It could be just more comfortable for you to use those controls on the side like that. So another, another really nice, um, a nice feature there in terms of the, the use case. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, it's and that's the other thing. I like the fact that they're all such large icons too. So you know you've got pretty self-explanatory, but they're large. Um, so I do want to show that arm. So I'm going to just flip this up a little bit. So here's that arm we were talking about, and when we pull that out there, and you'll notice now that it automatically switches to a different camera. And pull this down here, and. I've got a magazine here with a recipe on it. We can do a live pinch and zoom, so we can zoom into that image live and move that text around this way. Or earlier, how we had shown that you can take a snapshot. So I'm gonna take a snapshot of that. And maybe this, you know, maybe I was at my friend's house and they have this really good recipe and I wanted to take a snapshot of that. And now I can actually zoom in. I can view the images here. So I can see what that recipe is for. And then over here, it's pretty impressive because the text on this is very small. I mean, there's, a, there's an actual image of that magazine. And now I can zoom all the way in here. And if I wanna change my contrast, look at how that text now pops right out, right? With all of your instructions on how to make it. So it's super- a Perfect easy. example as well of navigating text in a different way. Like rather than you moving the magnifier over and above the text, which, you know, if, you know, in this instance, you've got a magazine, which can sometimes be tricky to navigate, to move a magnifier across a, a, a document like that, a book with, with you know, curvatures in it and whatnot. Yep. Um, you know, being able to put that under that extended camera because of that much larger field of view, you capture the text. And now how you're navigating around that text is, I think, you know, it certainly gives people a, a, an option to, to navigate text far more comfortably than, you know, than some people would want to, uh, rather than some people wanting to move the, the document under the camera. And it's intuitive too, because I mean, with most of the technology today, I mean, this is super intuitive for most people to just touch the screen. Um, we can save that. So just to show you how to save, we would hit the menu and we would hit save and it will save that image in there for us. Boom, done. Um, I'm going to close out of there and just show you another use. So, you know, you had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, reading medication or whatnot. So we can actually zoom in here and read the medication on the supplement facts and see what this is, serving size. 
And if we wanted to freeze frame that again, we can freeze frame that and then have that stored in there uh, to view at a later date. And, um, and and, I, and again, this is another great use case for, you know, why that extended camera comes in handy, because again, if this was a regular, oh, regular is the wrong word, but if, we, if this were a standard, you know, handheld portable video magnifier, you'd have to somehow try and balance and find the right field of view, uh, de uh, depth rather, um, to make sure that the focus is on, you know, a, a rounded text bottle, a rounded bottle, like very small text that you know, it can be very difficult to place correctly to ensure you get access to the text. So having a fixed position camera like this, where you've got, you know, again, that similar form factor of a desktop, you've got that, you know, wide working area um, uh, under that camera gives you, you know, hands-free access to, 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 to improve the way you get a hold of that print. And just perfect case for that too, you know, so here's a box of oatmeal yeah. and, you know, under a regular video magnifier, it would be, difficult to fit that under there. So now I can just fit this under there because you've got plenty of space and zoom in and I can then change my contrast to read that. I can zoom in, zoom out, snapshot that. And if I want to move that around, I can go back to my live color as well. I really like that example because you know what you find with you know, any, that, that's quite a thick box, I believe. I mean, it's a good couple yeah. of inches, oh, yeah. I believe. And what you find, at least, you know, what I found with some other devices in the past is once you, you know, the fixed depth uh, uh, is, is, can be tricky and there's often not a lot of tolerances um, in the performance of the camera. And again, we've taken the time um, to ensure that, you know, if you put a box under there that would significantly change the, the focus depth um, of what the unit is trying to read, this will still perform. This still is able to has enough tolerance where if you put something very thick under there, it would do the adjustment and still be able to provide a very nice crisp image of the text that you're trying to get hold of. The other thing I do want to point out, so if you were, we mentioned filling out forms and whatnot, I was going to uh, show a check, but I was like, I'd be giving everybody my uh, accounting routing number and all that stuff, right? <laughs> Which if you're okay, the other way around, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know if I want to do that. So um, this does have a focus lock here as well. So we can tap that and then that's gonna keep the focus on the material that you're writing on. So that was also a thought that they added that in there. Um, so it's- Yeah, and that's, you know, that's another thing that's really overlooked. And, and people, again, you know, if you can imagine you're, you know, if you're a senior and you, you're writing a greeting card and you get out this device that, you know, has served you well up until this point and you wanna use this writing mode, it, 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 you could see how very easily it, it, it might trip a user into thinking, you know, why is this, why can I use this to write? Because I'm losing focus. So having these, removing those barriers and saying, listen, it's, we've got a mode in here. You just simply press the pen if you wanted to write under it. And what that does is it ensures the focus of the paper and not on your hand. So what happens is the camera will adjust its focus because as your hand's moving under the camera, it's going gonna, it's gonna to focus on the top of your hand, which means that, that, that what you're actually trying to look at is, is going to be blurry. So it's just small detail, details like that, that you know, are, are so meaningful for the people that use these things. So I think, what time do we have? Are we going until one? Yeah. I, just, okay. I was gonna I wrap just... you guys up in about two minutes. Um, Michelle has a question that I'll be able to really quickly answer and then we'll wrap for this session, but. Sure. Then you guys just finish up what you're doing. I just wanted to show one more thing. So we have mentioned it, the OCR. I've got something here. Uh, that is a newspaper article that was scanned. So I just want to show you how easy it is well. And you'll see the highlighting here. So if I click play. Since 1998, according to LPL Financial and Facts Set, but out. So you can see there quickly how it's going to read for you. And as Richard mentioned earlier, if we go into the settings and we change the view, we can change that to the exact view. And you'll notice here, you can now better see that that's a, a newspaper article that we had scanned in. It's industrial average. And we can have it reading it that way as well. 11.1. And you can still magnify, you can still, it will still spotlight the text. Change the highlighting, all of that stuff, so. Change the speed of speech, of course. Is, is. Yep, so if you click on the um, speaker button, you can actually increase or decrease the volume, and then you can also increase or decrease the, you know, the speed of the voice too. So 
a lot of flexibility within this unit. Um, and I think if we're good, we can open it up for questions, um, comments, concerns, complaints, you tell me. Michelle had a question about where this session would be archived and I don't have an exact URL right now, but I would keep your eye on the Optilic YouTube channel because our typical practice is to break this down into tasks rather than just publishing the long recording, although that may be available from optilec.us in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any questions regarding this session or any of the other sessions we do, send an email to training at thesparrow.com, V-I-S-P-E-R-O, training at thesparrow.com. So I'm sorry I don't have a better answer for you at this time, Michelle, but check out the Optilec YouTube channel. Which is uh, which we do have, so I'll, I'll give the Q&A and then I'll show you the social media uh, pages as well there, Michelle, so you'll be able to find it. But if you do have a question, Alt and H will open your chat and you can type it in there or Alt plus Y to raise your hand and I'm gonna open up chat here as well. Um, <laughs> good one there, Anthony. I do have more hair above my lip now than I do on my head, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so next slide there, Carl, will show the social media and it's Optilec Tube on YouTube. And I know that you can actually watch, we do stream these live on there. So right now, Optilec Tube, so that's O-P-T-E-L-E-C-T-U-B-E. -E -E. And we will have that uh, archived on there, I'm sure at some point, it's live right now. It will be up there live, uh, you know, as a recording for I think a couple of days and then we'll pull it down to edit it or whatnot. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at Optelec, O-P-T-E-L-E-C. Instagram is Optelec US. Facebook is at Optelec. We also have a blog where we do post about these different webinars coming up. Uh, that's at us.optelec.com forward slash blog. And you can email us, info at optelec.com. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you have any pricing questions, or feel free to drop Richard or I an email. Uh, my email again is mwood at vespero.com. Uh, and give us any feedback. I'd love to hear, you know, what more, what other products do you want to learn about? How do you want to see what different things do you want us to do in these demos? Um, you know, we're learning as we go from you. So please give us your and, feedback. And I would say, you know, opt to like uh, as a brand for Vespero and the products that, you know, it's developed. You know, this is a this is really a showcase product for us in in terms of the use cases and the flexibility. But you know, it's not alone in in some of the releases that Optelec has made recently. You know, they've they've started to change the the approach in in terms of using today's technology for you know really maximizing um, the flexibility and portability and use cases for you know what traditionally have been you know very static in every sense of the word. Uh, devices, you know, back 20 years ago when, when desktop magnification um, was, was widely used. And so you've seen Optelec move into, you know, much more portable approach in terms of, you know, they've got a clear view go now, which is a true desktop uh, that actually folds, um, you know, and, and provides a step up, if you like, from the Compact 10, um, has distance and whatnot. And then similarly with the smaller devices, so if a Compact 10 inch device um, feels too big, um, they actually have a compact six inch device that rather uniquely uh, doubles up as a uh, virtual reality headset. So if, if you were wanting to, for example, you know, use these types of devices for watching television, the, the compact six, the smaller one is actually something can be adapted to, to wear much like a VR headset. So they, I think they, 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 go ahead, Mike. Oh, no, I was going to say, and it's got all pretty much all the same functionality uh, that you can add that reading stand onto that as well as the option. Okay. And, you know, that simplifies reading larger pages. But, you know, you've got your OCR, you've got your Bluetooth, Miracast, all that stuff built in that. It, unit too. It's hard to be. I mean, I, you know, I, I'll say again, I don't think there's a, a, a one silver bullet that will do everything for everyone. But the Compact 10 is, is certainly a step closer. Agreed. Thank you, Mike and Richard, for coming and sharing your expertise today. We really appreciate it. Oh, gosh, Perfect. Richard, we appreciate you inviting us. And I don't want to forget, um, so I don't get slapped around here. So the close, so the opening code uh, was for ACVREP was compact, and the closing code is magnifier. 
And you can email those to credits, C-R-E-D-I-T-S at thespiro.com. And we'll get you the certificate uh, over the next few days. So opening yeah. was compact, closing was magnifier. And thank you to all of you who joined us live. Again, these sessions will be broken down into shorter videos on the Optelec YouTube channel. And please don't forget to join us next month. We will be doing a low vision hardware webinar with one of our sister brands in Vispero Enhanced Vision on the Transformer. And that'll be February 11th at noon Eastern. Again, we'll be joined by Mike Wood and another guest, Michelle Williams. So don't miss that for sure. Thank you again. And for any questions, email training at vespero.com. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.